Illin Empire. As you look back, you think, so love did do him in. After all, I was right. If it weren't for her, he would not have been there. The shot would not have connected with his soft plate. Hmm. Looks like love did him in after all. She's silent, holding onto her coffee mug. No vapor rises from it. It's cold. Remember this silence. The lady is dangerous. People suffer around her. Yeah, she finally breaks the silence. I like to think he didn't love me. Or that it was chemically induced and not real. Why? Easier that way. She takes a sip. We're going to keep going down this thought process, though, since we passed that Inland Empire check. Was it real? I don't know. She looks down at the yard, then back into her coffee. And we leveled! Holy crap! All right. So let's, uh... Let's spend this. So I think... At the top of this recording, Woodwater, you didn't suggest what to say. Uh, what to take next. So I'm... I'm thinking I want Pain Threshold, Shivers, Esprit de Corpse. Something I don't have a point in that would help it. You know, let's take another point in Esprit de Corpse. Let's read about it first. Esprit de Corpse is the very spirit of policing, the Copgeist. Enables you to understand your blue-souled sisters and brothers, not only by picking up subtle hints from your partner, but by witnessing flash sideways scenes as they play out in your precinct. At high levels, you'll be the very heart of the police force, not only willing and able, but obliged to take a bullet for your partner. However, without Esprit de Corpse, you'll be flying blind, unable to understand discreet remarks colleagues make in high-stakes situations, remarks that just might save your life. Well, I think now we will go outside that one gentleman's room that we're waiting for. Oh, weren't we supposed to investigate this, I think, as well? We were. Uh, before we make the attempt, I think I've got an item that will help us with that check. We do. We have some glasses. So let's put those on. Do I have anything else to help me with this? I don't think I do. I do not. All right. You've heard what happened. All right, let's give this a try. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. Visual calculus, what happened here? The golden light melts away into the blue, glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon-lit shapes, a man and a woman on the single bed. What position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling, the woman is on her back. It's the night of March 4th, and the shot has just been fired. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Endurance, ending him. Where does it come from? From the roof outside, location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona, uh, sorry, corona behind the woman's back. Inspect the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Have a look at point A, the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions. All on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime. Most likely of the origin points. 
Shouldn't there be gun residue outside? There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. So I'm what? 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? 72%. With a weapon that's good for medium range, like a rifle or sports pistol, this is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside, it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Are there any arguments against A Prime, the roof? None that you found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could the shot have come from inside the room? A closer point? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%. Yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing ex excludes a possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point in Martinez? Yes. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned board boardwalk, ending with an inlet in the bay. Let's call them B prime. More precisely, uh, B for boardwalk, B for land's end, and B for the in is islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. How about the boardwalk? 700 meters away. The likeliness of the B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on the inside, we're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. How about Land's End? 1.2 kilometers away. The least likely of these positions, let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it, possibly from a tent? Nah, too far-fetched. How about the inlet? One kilometer away. An unlikely point of origin beyond the dock somewhere, on an islet of the Bay of Martinez, perhaps? There are in islets there, islets there, badly charted as they may be. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window between Rue de saint Gesline 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets questionable. Kim, do you think the shot could have come from further than the roof in Martinez? From where, precisely? Let's say uh, B prime, the boardwalk, B double prime, Land's End, and B Triple Prime, the Islet. I see you've given this a lot of thought, he remarks, raising an eyebrow. Are those locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Much less than from the roof. But still. Okay, well... We should see if there is a gunshot residue or sniper nests if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out, one by one. It would be diligent to do. Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through the whirling. A simple hypothesis. Oops. Alright, so we have 20 minutes left, everyone. That gives us enough time to, I think... Go outside and wait outside the one gentleman's house. Talk to Kim for a little bit. And then we will go ahead and question the guy without the shirt on that we saw the other day.
We've been so busy this day, too. We haven't really deviated too much from the main plot. What did we do on this d entire day? We investigated the drugs, found out who was delivering them, tied it to the murder. We discovered that... We discovered this whole plot now with the, the bullet. And we're making good progress on trying to resolve that. If we ever... It looks like at one point in the game, we're going to make it out of this area. Uh, what I mean is this area of Martinez, and be able to walk outside, maybe even along the coast. Maybe we'll get a map like Planescape Torment and be able to visit all the different locations there. Alright, so we're walking around this way to get to the apartment. Actually, to get to that guy's apartment. Oh, uh, no, we can go this way. I guess technically we could talk to Kuno. Oh, <laughs> Let me also change my glasses. I wonder if Kuno is still even out here. He is. My goodness, this kid. I thought there was two of them there for a second. I think that was a, a reflection. It's a reflection on this thing. Oh, you know what? Let's... Do we see anything else here with the higher perception? Still can't do anything about that door. Oh, hello. We see something down over there. Someone's shoes. And another and another hidden cardboard box that we can search now. 23 cents hidden in the shoes. We'll take that. $3.82 there as well. I'm interested in investigating this since we took more... Pers um, Perception? So some things, yep, some things were now visible to us that weren't before. Book. 16 days in coldest April. This is not a time to read, though. Okay, before we go and talk to the ju oh hello, we see f we see someone in here. Hmm, huh. that's kind of creepy in a way. We should check Kuno's place as well to see if there's anything we can find of interest in it. But we'll go to the roof. That's right, the balcony at the moment. The curtains shift just a little. Someone is watching from within. Hmm. Looks like our talk with this gentleman's not going to go undisturbed. Or rather, I'm sorry, um, it will be noticed. Okay, so what type of clothes do I want for this? Plus one drama. Drama might be useful to tell if this guy's going to lie or not. Plus one is put the corpse. Plus one shivers. Or plus one suggestion. Electrochemistry. We're using half light. Are we using half light? Let's take a more electrochemistry for this. That'll be good. All right, Kim, let's talk to you for a bit. Yes? 
Oh, we, can, we have a few things we can try talking about. Well, it looks like there is a sexy dark mystery in the case, but we might struggle to prove it. Let's go ahead and give us a try anyway. Inland Empire, convince Kim there's a sexy dark mystery twist in the case. Holy crap! What if you did it? Did what? The hanged man? Yeah, you killed them. And then, as part of the plan, you drowned out the memory. Empathy. Maybe this is why your chest feels so hollow. You did an awful thing, and you can't even bring yourself to acknowledge it. Physical instrument. Are you sure you would have had the strength to take down a hardened mercenary? You're not in the best of shape. Huh. I didn't think we passed the check, and now that I did, I want to kind of pursue it. We would have sold... No, we would have had to have a better gun, I think, than... Well, actually, I don't know what my gun looks like yet. My character's hand-eye coordination is non-existent. If it requires firing a gun, I don't think we did it. But we'll keep it to ourselves. This is your burden to bear now. Let's try another one. Logic. Why did the 31st set... Actually, before we do that, what's my logic? Okay, it's as high as, as, high as it can be at the moment. Kim... Why do you think the 41st sent me? Look at you. It's because you're a failure. They sent you to slight precinct 57. What? No. That can't be right. Just think about it for a second. You're a raging alcoholic who showed up three days late and argues with his necktie. You weren't sent here to win. Kim, what if my precinct sent me on this case because I'm a fuck-up? Like, as a joke, I've considered it. His voice is somber. But it's... Are we playing sad cop? But it's not true, right? I don't think I can say one way or another. I do think it's somewhat unlikely, though. Why is that? I checked the records. This jurisdiction dispute, who polices Martinez, reaches back to the 30s. It's as old as my station. And all this time, we can't decide who gets Martinez? I think... Yes, both stations would prefer a win. Do you see me as, their, as a safe bet? Safe? No, you're old. You've made it this far. Something has brought you through. We've only just started working together, so I don't know what it is yet. But it's there. So no, I don't think they sent you as a joke. And even if they did... They're in for a surprise. Volition. He's right. There are no airtight theories, just paranoia. You've given it some thought. Now let it go. And we, we're not earning those charges. We should be earning them, unless five is the max charges I'm, al I'm allowed. Kim, I'm going to talk about you for a bit. Me? Yeah, you. I don't see how my life is pertinent to the investigation. Come on, we'll work better together if we have more report. Hmm, that's a fair point. All right, for the good of the investigation, what do you want to know? Do you ever talk with yourself? What do you mean? You know, when you're thinking. Do you ever have conversations with, like, your own brain? I have no idea what you're talking about. 
So you're saying your brain never just chimes in with advice or warnings or anything? I can't say that it does, no. When I need to think, I just use my notebook. Lieutenant produces his small blue notebook and idly thumbs through a few pages. Empathy. That's where his conversations with himself take place. Electrochemistry. You're super lu lucid, yet psychedelic. You don't need office supplies to connect your nervous system. You're special. You're wearing glasses. That's correct. Physical instrument. That makes him a binoclard. Completely uncaught material, if you say so yourself. I'm not going to call him a bino. Glasses are cool. Are they? They're mostly just cumbersome. Uh, tell me a secret about yourself. Good. <laughs> narrows a single eyebrow. No. Come on. You can do it. Your brain sends a signal to your lips, but they refuse the order. Something is paralyzing them. You're pretty sure it has something to do with the lieutenant's eyebrow. Volition. The eyebrow is exercising psionic control over you. What's happening to me? Something the matter detective. Authority. This guy's got authority off the charts. With just a flick of his eyebrow, he's able to make you his thrall. So what can I do about it? Nothing. You better hope he doesn't abuse his authority. There's a lot of it. Silently scream for help. If the lieutenant were an evil man, who knows what sort of havoc he could wreck, wreak. Empathy. Fortunately, he is, he is a committed officer of the RCM. He'll only use his powers for the good of the investigation. Lieutenant relaxes his eyebrow, and you seem to regain control of yourself. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome. I'm not going to point out the fact that he is a different race. I think that's, uh... Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with asking someone where they come from. But the way this statement is phrased, I do not like it. Um, unless we were, unless we were better friends with the, with the detective and we could joke with him about this sort of thing, I don't think I'll broach I'll broach that subject. Uh, that's all for now. Good. Let's change the subject. We gained something. Oh right, we gained this book. The cover features a row of concrete buildings with a monochrome rainbow in the sky. It tells a rather excruciating story about two lovers during an ethnic unrest in Yugograd. The book has been filled under psychological realism. A uh, filed, sorry. Wow, look at this. Our task to do is greatly lowered from the tasks we've done. Look at this. We've done more things than we have le yet to left to do. That's amazing. But we also have nine minutes, so let's go back down. I guess we'll talk. We'll check Kuno's place. And holy crap, look at me rolling well and or better than average. Oh, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it, everyone. While playing this game, I I made a realization the other day. I've played this game before. Not this game, but games very similar to it. This is a... I don't know how this... Uh, well, let's try, Tim. It feels like this game would be better as a book. I've played games... So, when I was growing up, I played many Choose Your Own... Well, I have played, I think, three of the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Like, literally titled Choose Your Own Adventure. But I was a huge fan of game books, I think is what they're called. I have, over there in the other room, Lone Wolf, Grey Star, Way of the Tiger, um, Fabled Lands, Shattered Ice, I think is one of them. I have so many uh, Middle Earth adventures. I was a huge, huge fan of them. Oh, hello. Wait one second. This gentleman's outside. What are you doing over here, sir? Oh! There's two guys over here, too. Oh, okay. So I have talked with these guys in the past um, with that one, well, the one version of me that only got through day one. There's a huge amount of conversation that you can learn from these guys about the history of this place. 
But we've only got nine minutes, so we should avoid talking with them at the moment. Right, let's click on this and see if there's anything else for us to examine. Um, are there any... Are there any checks we need to do? One second, where's my, where's my, it's gonna be here, it'll be in your map. Oh, so we have another, it's pretty core, I don't, well, we can try passing that. There's no way we'll pass that empathy check. Like, these are all the white checks that we either can take, or that, or at the very least, are available. Oh, right, we want to shout into the furnace. I think we'll do that tomorrow. Sorry, Windwater, I keep meaning to do it, and I keep forgetting. Well, I remembered, well, we actually have nine minutes left. Maybe we should do it. First, let's check out Kuno's. Okay, there's nothing else special in here. Oh, he hello. That's actually a f fallen, s fallen slogan from an aggressive youth-oriented campaign. This right here. Check back here really quick and or the roof and see if there's anything else we've left up here. Since I am walking around at the moment, we may as well put this in my hand. Oh, no, nothing here. I'll be very surprised if we miss anything up on this roof. Yeah, we did not. Okay, forget it. Let's go. But I have nine minutes left to pass. So how can I pass just nine minutes? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I could always p sit on the bench, but I think it might be best instead we try to pass some time a different way. We can talk with Kuno a little more, I suppose. I have a bad feeling about this, though. Fuck, there's Kuno here! One second. The detective and I are one being at the moment. Fuck, there's Kuno here! Kuno, I found your shack. Point to the shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack? It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? I phase shifted to the roofing material. Shit! Get the fuck out of here! You can't do that. He can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Peace can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit, he says to himself, then turns to you. How'd you like it in there, pig, pig o boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit in there, right? Yeah, what, what was with the pig head? Oh, that! He picks a bit of dirt from his fingernail. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. Cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. This one. Point to your head. It's shit. What? Uh. He looks confused. What is this shit? A fucking on yourself? This is weird level shit. Kuno doesn't go there. 
fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? <laughs> nice. We got all of them confused. That's great. What's with the tube of... Mag... I can't... Magnesolum, Kuno. It's a vitamin pig. Don't you know anything? He looks at you like you... He looks at you like you just pointed at the sun and that's what it was. It's magnesium, right? Yeah, it's the mag. You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game. Kuna goes through it like a tube a day. Rips mag like a motherfucker. And you could use a barrel. Don't teach him, Kuno. He's gonna use it against you, Kuno. Come on, it's just my need. Uh, no. I know all about magnesium. I rock it all the time. He looks at you, eyes bulging. You're not getting this, pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. I found the plate cut with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno's Shazam. Kuno rides a fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old. But you could have that sparkle in your eyes. I've heard enough of this. Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. I gotta ask, who is Kuno? Kuno's Kuno, pig. The boy points to his chest with both thumbs. Logic. It, it's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective, perspective as a shield. Half light. Kuno. Primal. Violent. So I want to go with half lights or logic. Kuno. Sounds like something you'd call a rabid dog. Yeah! His eyes light up. Think about it. Think about that rabid Kuno shit. Empathy. He seems glad someone understood what he was going for. But right as he's getting distracted, you hear a malevolent hiss from behind the fence. Watch out, Kuno. He's trying to fiddle you. He's going to put his hands on you. The thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent like a fire alarm. The sound gets louder as a child shouts at the windows overlooking the yard. Help! Pig's got Kuno! Help! Rape! Help! The boy joins in. He's got the Kuno! Help! Volition, calm down. Anyone watching can see you're doing nothing. Just keep it professional. Necktie, fuck that! Confront him. We do what Volition wants. I'm not doing anything, see? Everybody, please! He's digging his dick out! Escalate, Kuno. His dick is out. You're afraid. Pigs are hurting Kuno! Somebody, please! It's full blast now. The wind carries the message far and wide across Martinez. Logic. How did we get here? How did this happen? This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his reason. Thump. The blow connects surprisingly well, leaving your knuckles tingling. Pain threshold. Kuno feels it. This was no light tap. <sighs> oh, what? Disoriented 12, the disoriented 12-year-old is trying to get his bearings. I think we can have a normal conversation now. Am I right, Kuno? Officer. This is very far from normal police conduct. Lieutenant breaks it, his silence. Get yourself together. It's the corpse. For heaven's sake, he thinks. This has gone too far. Don't make this any worse than it is. Just get back to questioning the kid. Okay, pig. He's no longer wearing his demonic grin. Something happened. The punch made him calmer. Authority. If this act was about him trying to establish dominance over you, 
It's safe to say things didn't go as he'd planned. Kuno knows how to respect that violent shit. You could see Kuno's dad. Kuno's dad doesn't give a shit about anything. He declares with pride. The creature behind the fence has fallen ominously silent. Only her eyes are alive, jumping from actor to actor. Okay, pig. Talk to Kuno. We're back in this shit. He brushes the dirt off his pants. The fuck do you want? Uh, we'll need to wear some empathy clothing first. And it's also after 2100. We'll come back for Kuno. Kuno doesn't fucking care. So I thought we, we, we would do that ages ago. My first character. Again, the one that never got... Uh, that started day two but never got this far. Hold on. Do I want to wear my... Dr oh, I am wearing this, right? This gives you plus one drama. I hate the way that looks. I'll take minus two authority, though, with that. Ah, more penalty to drama. So if I were this, it's just minus one authority. Why is that again? Okay, we'll go with this. So my, again, the first version I did, uh, I got into that argument with Kuno day one while trying to figure out how to get the corpse down. And I clocked him in the head then as well. Oh, it was glorious. I love just how your character's just looking at him and then suddenly, whomp, just right in the face. It was interesting having higher stats this time around, seeing logic show up and try to calm down the situation and give me a conversation option to probably do so. But, oh, I love just punching Kuno in the face. <laughs> it's amazing. We'll go back and talk to Kuno probably tomorrow. We've had, we've had a pretty good episode so far. We have made lots and lots of checks successfully. So we're going to have to pray this goes well. Also... Oh, there he is. So before I do this... You can get one Esprit de Corpse. Actually, there's no reason to ever wear that, because that also gives us plus one shivers. I don't care about those stats. I would like to get authority to... I could wear the boots, but I'll wear them tomorrow. <laughs> as opposed to at this moment. I think... Not gonna need that, I think. All right. I guess I'll be content with what I've got. Actually, we'll take the half. The plus one half light. He's actually outside his room. All real connections begin in the mind. Let's put, although I don't plan on smoking any, let's put our cigarettes. Um, in our hand. Jean de Marie, you found me. The young man on the balcony gives you a bright smile before taking another drag from his cigarette. Empathy. It feels like a Friday. He seems to be in a good mood tonight. And his shirt is still unbuttoned. We got your hint. Found the key right under that stone. Beautiful. 
he replies smiling. As he looks at you, something sparkles in his eyes. So tell me, are you here to make things right again? I'm not going to make things just right. I'm going to make them spectacular. Beautiful. He says again. A nearby street lamp casts shadows on his chin, drawing out the slender cheekbones. I have some good news for you. My Sunday friend is visiting me tonight. I told him about you, and he'd like to say hello. Step in. He's already waiting. It's Friday tonight? It feels like Friday. Yeah, it does feel like the end of the week. Such gentle weather. Very well, I'll talk to him. But first I want to talk to you. I have so many questions. That's nice, but I don't have anything to tell you. It's my friend you're looking for, not me. He takes another drag of his unfiltered cigarette and looks around. It's getting dark and the neighboring windows have lit up one by one. Downstairs, a cat crosses the road, disappearing into the bush. Besides, I've got to run. Inland Empire, he's going to leave you alone again. That's sad. Go if you must. I don't care. I don't care about people leaving me all the time. Don't worry, we'll meet again. He gently rests his hand on your shoulder. Come find me in the bar of the Whirling some week, some evening. Shivers. A man on high heels stumbles out of a basement club, music blasting over the entire district. It's chilly, and as the chemicals hit his nervous system, a thousand shivers ripple through his body. Is that this guy? All right, then go. Take care, all right, he says with another disarming smile before slipping off into the night. There's something so different about him that I just can't put my finger on. Different, of course. His shirt. Why is his shirt always unbuttoned? His shirt. Within his eyes, trying to hold back laughter. His, sh his shirt. His shirt. His shirt. No, I don't know why his shirt is always unbuttoned. His mouth tightens as though trying to hold something back. Come on, detective. Let's go. We've got a potential witness to interview. His Sunday friend, remember? Lieutenant nods at the apartment door before you. Oh, I thought this was his apartment. Oh, his friend is in here. A quarterly business magazine. Governmental issues take me all over Revishaw, as you can see. An old photo of the same apartment, dated year 01. Expensive men's perfumes linger in the air. Oh, I understand. I, I'm a bit slow, I suppose. I think that guy's in a relationship with this gentleman. Buckets of paint on a layer of old newspapers, and he's different. He's He is different. He is indeed different. An exquisite canopy of bed... An exquisite canopy bed made of metal. Holy crap! Sumerian conical hat! Plus one logic, minus one suggestion. How do we look in it? <laughs> kind of sad. You look kind of sad. I'm not going to wear it at the moment, but that's amazing. I don't want the penalty to suggestion. Actually, maybe maybe we maybe we can take away the bonus to suggestion because this is now giving us plus 1 logic. We're already down a point of authority. Although maybe now
almost all pluses at this moment. We look terrible. We'll just pretend I don't look like that. <laughs> and uh, we'll, we'll talk to him. You have acquired the hat. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. Authority. You shouldn't be seeing him in an intimate setting. For some reason, you can feel this man is your... Superior. Inspector Corp. Superior? But he's not in the command chain. My name is Charles Villedron. I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sir Leclerc. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I'm here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Suggestion. No. First, ask an innocuous personal question to get the interview off on the right foot. Authority. Yes. Make it clear you're the one setting the terms here. Half-Light, yeah, yeah, let's fuck with them. Who does he think he is assisting you? Point to the bed. Before we go on, I absolutely have to inquire about this wonderful canopy. Oh yes, my friend has a great eye for these things. He refuses to tell me where it came from. It's, um, it's a mystery. <laughs> I believe they call this type of frame industrial. It's very comfy. That's really all I can tell you about it. He forms a little rooftop with his fingers. Cold air sweeps in from the balcony. That didn't work at all. What was that? You're supposed to fuck with them, not compliment the decor. Lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. You actually witnessed the lynching. I'm um, sorry to say I did, officer. The man gives a solemn nod. Logic. He didn't see the hanging. He saw the little show staged by the Hardys. Let him talk. He may know more than even he knows. Start from the beginning, if you don't mind. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me. Like in a play. Drama. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers like a drama teacher setting the scene. The lieutenant is already scribbling down notes. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember the first uh, that first they came in carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Lieutenant nods to you. That lines up with the previous testimony, doesn't it? Well done, detective. Thank you, sir. I think I've got the picture. Anything else stand out? Only that there were about eight or ten. I couldn't make out anything. It was so dark and it was quiet. He says, smoothing his hair. Quietest lynching I ever heard of. Let alone heard. But I suspect you already knew that already. I can't say I'm surprised. The fine reputation of the men and women serving in the RCM is well deserved. We get another point. I think we'll put this one... I want to start improving one of these. But I feel like I should take another point in something I already have a point in, or unlock another thought in our thought cabinet. We'll wait on this. Let's take, let's take another point in a, in a skill. Hmm. 
Let's take a pointed visual calculus. It'll help us as a cop. Reconstruct crime scenes, make laws of physics work for the law. Cool for forensic scientists, tactical fighters, math-minded people. Do I really want this or do I want paint? Let's take this. Visual calculus verses you not only in the laws of the state, but the laws of nature. It enables you to create virtual crime scene models in your mind's eye. You'll see how a bullet shattered the glass, and from that traces trajectory with math mathematical precision. You'll also count so many footprints, at a glance discern shoe size and design, as well as the height, weight, and gender of those who wore them. At high level, visual calculus makes the world reveal secrets to you, but you may all be so absorbed by your mind diorama that you don't notice as crooks steal your pants. However, at low levels, your mind's eye will be blind. Reconstructing crime scenes will be difficult without some outside help. What's an official like you doing in Martinez? The Coalition is only looking for the price... I can't pronounce that. He raises an index finger. Infiltration is a... Inflation is a killer. Like a heart disease blocking the normal circulation of the economy. It must be controlled. The economy impacts the entire international community, which is why it requires international oversight. What is uh, the price stabilitai? It is the most important thing. That doesn't tell me anything. It's the central goal of any sound monetary policy. Maintaining the price whatever, is essential to maintaining high levels of economic activity, which is essential for maintaining high levels of employment, which is essential for maintaining the social something. Basically, it makes sure that the price of bread doesn't change. Precisement. Too much inflation, bread becomes too expensive. Too much deflation, it becomes too cheap for bakers to produce. That's why the Institute of Price Stabilité works to keep inflation just below 2%. Below 2% of what? Uh, but not too far below, no. Too below is also bad. Below, but too close to 2%. You're not answering my questions at all. The Coalition believes in the importance of informing the public about the benefits of the Price Stabilité. Transparency is one of our principles. Would you like an informational pamphlet? Okay, sure. Give me a leaflet. A sound monetary policy is essential for addressing uncertainty. Stability is the raison d'etre of the moral intern. It is the reason why I identify as a moralist. He pats his pockets. But oh, I don't have my leaflets on me today. Too bad. Uh, you can always call information line. Making information available is part of the moral intern's commitment to transparency. So you're some kind of bureaucrat. Yes, as I said before, I'm a commissioner from Surlecliff, working for the Institute of Price Stabilité. He glances at his watch. This is one of the main projects of the Moral Intern. Tell me about Surlecliff. What's it to say? Surlecliff is a modern, un urban uh, is a modern urbanized country that measures very high on the Human Development and Freedom Index. Mostly, though, it's known as the executive heart of Espis. I'm sorry, Epis. Epis? Epis. Moreover, it's a great sponsor of less emerged countries. Revestral is only one of its many darlings whose progress it supports and cherishes. Oh, what makes Revestral Sherlock Clef's darling? Because a great percentage of Revestral's culture hails from Sherlock Clef. Its language, its people, its cuisine even or at least in the downtown La Delta area. Perception. Taste. Jamrock and other parts of the international zone have been mercifully spared of Sir Leclef's love for meatballs and mashed potatoes. Oh my god, that sounds amazing! <laughs> okay. But what are you doing here, in this apartment? Ah, well, I'm renovating it. It is an interesting project. The building used to be a 12-story skyscraper before the cannons took down top four, took the top four stories off. This, of course, happened when the Coalition forces landed here. He smiles. You could say I'm undoing some of the material damage the international community caused when we arrived. What is this international community? 
La communauté internationale is what Ravacholians colloquially call the coalition. In other words, the nations that stopped the disaster of the revolution. I've heard of this moral intern before, but I'd like to know more. It's the International Organization for Moralists, hence Moralist International. The Institute of Price Stability is just one of the many mind babies, as is the coalition. <clears throat> Turn to Kim. So what I'm hearing is, we're moral interns bitches. Doing one's job doesn't automatically make one anyone's bitch. Besides, there are more nefarious powers to work for than the moral intern. Are you a moralist? But of course, am I a moralist? Well, do you value freedom? Do you believe in a normal, stable world governed by democratic values? But what is a normal, stable world? The Occident is part of a normal world. Orange, Sir Lecliffe. Martinez doesn't seem very normal or stable to me. Martinez? No, uh, Martinez is something else. What about the rest of Revachal? Is it part of the normal world? Revachal is generally difficult. It is led by an interim government, which means it hasn't yet achieved full democracy. But they're working towards it. You're all doing very well here, relatively speaking. He gives you an improving nod. So, uh, these are our answers. Um, we can go with, it sounds boring, we want more action. I think that's probably what Sam would say. We can say, it's foreign occupiers. Revolution must be governed by revolutionians. That's what the revolutionaries probably wanted. Democracy is a meaningless sham as long as the working class is under the boot heel of the cap of capital. Uh, by, the, by them adding working class, it hints to me that this is a uh, communist... Um, phrase. We're not playing a communist today, so we're not going to choose that one. And this is funny. I do like option four, but I think Sam would say one. I don't think I'm a moralist. Moralism sounds incredibly boring. I want more action. Do you think uh, peace is boring? What about uh, prosperity? Uh, peace is pretty good. But Sam probably would, would agree that we wouldn't get any peace. Prosperity sounds like a lot of fun. It does. But we're, we'll go down with Sam's, yeah, that shit sounds like a snooze fest. My friend, that is only because you have never known the alternative. And I pray you never do. Now, enough of this delightful political interlude. Was there anything else you wanted to ask? Enough business. Actually, no, we should talk about Orange because uh, Clage comes from it. Tell me about Orange. Orange is an exemplary nation who, as a core member of Epsis, contributes 28% of our annual budget. Next to Sir Leclef, Orange is probably the most prominent member of the international community. Okay, but outside Epsis, what is Orange? Orange's economy is one of the most advanced in the world. It has successfully transitioned from heavy in industry to advanced services, and generally acts as an engine for sustainable change in the international community. Can't you just, like, talk like a normal person? About what? About Orange. Just tell me what it's like there. Oh, it's very urban and very well organized. The streets are clean, there are horse cars run on time, and the people are polite and efficient. Like I said... They are an example for less emerged nations to follow. Enough business. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you wish, officer. The man who was lynched outside your window was from Orange. Oh? That's unusual. The Orangers are not the kind of people you associate with heinous crimes. It's such an upstanding and responsible country. That's not how I would describe this guy. Well, certainly one cannot rely simply on generalizations. That would go against our commitment to individual freedoms. And of course, any loss of life is a tragedy. The man seems to observe you for a moment of, si moment of silence. So tell me, what have you learned about the victim? 
His name was Lely, and he was 42 years old. Ah, what a shame. A man cut down in his prime earning years. His earning potential isn't really important. What matters is that he was a mercenary. Aha, I, I can't pronounce it. The man says as though describing a character from a fancy novel. Yes, it's hard to believe they still exist. He liked to get high and tell bra and tell brag about war crimes he'd committed. Extremely distasteful behavior. I cannot condone either drug use or needless boasting. Suffice to say, that is not how we do things in Sir Leclerc. Electrochemistry? Oh, pain threshold. That's because they're all a bunch of squares who like to sit around with their fingers up each other's assholes. Wow, what the heck? That was rather a mean pain threshold. He was a poor kid before the Originist government put him in the military academy. The man nods. It's the responsibility of any good welfare state to take care of its most unfortunate citizens. They turned, uh... They turned him into a psychopathic killing machine. They gave him a successful career. The man holds up a finger as though he made a brilliant point. Half-Light. Yes! Killing was his business. Business was good. Empathy. Did he love it before they made him do it again and again and again? What else has your investigation uncovered? He was a motherfucker and a killer. Officer, you shouldn't speak ill of the dead. It's okay, he told me so. He... So you spoke with the victim before he died? Yeah, it was a wild coincidence. Let's move on, though. The man seems slightly relieved, as though he's just narrowly survived a perilous bend in the road. After he was discharged from the military, he joined a mercenary outfit named Krennel. That is extremely unfortunate. Yes, it's regrettable that this practice has a history in, the, in certain Occidental nations, even highly advanced members of Epsis. But rest assured, the Orangist government has committed to producing a timetable that would lay out the path to transition to a professional army. Soon there'll be no need for mercenaries like this poor man. What kind of timetable are we talking about here? Oh, it's hard to put an exact date on it. I believe the proposal for the timetable is due to be completed around 60 or 61. What? That's like a decade from now. The man nods. See? That's the kind of progress that can be made when the moral intern makes it possible. Do we want to keep going down this road? As a merc, he killed a lot of people on the Seminine Islands for the sake of the orange pharmaceutical industry. The man shakes his head solemnly. A great shame, yes. Colonialism is a dark specter in Origine's past. I don't... I, is it going on at the moment? I don't know what's going on at the moment. Shake your head, too. History is very complicated and rarely simple. Which is why the work of the moral intern is so critical. It is our great bulwark against another century of bloodshed. That's all. That's who he was. As I said, the loss of life is terrible, no matter who the person may have been. I do hope... You're able to bring his killer or killers to justice. We must show that the rule of law still applies, even in Revishal. Thanks. I've got all I need. A moment, officer. Do you have everything you need for me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Hold on, why can't we talk later? It's against diplomatic best practices for an official in any position to be discussing murders with the local militiamen. He pauses, and I'm pressed for time. After you leave, I should be leaving as well. Logic. That's not the real reason he's so apprehensive. Men in his position shouldn't be seen loitering around in underprivileged young men's apartments in the middle of the night. I'm not going anywhere, so I'll take a look around the, in the apartment. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. He answers his watch. Let me know if you have any further questions. What's this? says Empathy. We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. That's me. Mr. Reasonable. Someone's got to keep it sane around here. 
the air suddenly feels calmer, more transparent in a strangely tender way. Perhaps it's a hangover. Perhaps it's, it's a temporary surge of serotonin. But something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the kingdom of conscience. First, where is this kingdom of conscience? It's not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only be achieved a handful of times. Oh, I see. This is a enlightened, enlightened centrism. No one who has been watching the series, all like 12 of you, no one has given me what's told me what Sam Burke's political affiliations were. And I don't know if he had any. So I think we'll keep him... Although we did take the the thought, so we will say things about the taxes, I I think we will make him a centrist. How do you bring about those circumstances? In incrementally. Yawn. You get there faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Die. She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually. Increment by increment. That's not necessarily true, but, but that's the way I prefer to see change. Me, personally, there's, there's, I'm giving you one of my secrets. I prefer to see change happen incrementally and with the acceptance of everyone. Often, though, change can and progress can happen at the end of a bullet or a war or some massive or some sort of like a technological advance which forces people to come to grips with a change. We're gonna be, that will happen to us soon here uh, probably in all of our modern countries. First world countries? Is that the word to say? Auto automation will be a thing very soon. AI will be a thing very soon. And having worked a few jobs where, well, do I want to go into this? I'll, d no, I do not. Let's, I'll just say that, uh, I'll wrap this up by saying that I don't know if we'll come out of the changes with everyone being better off. Okay, but what's the kingdom of conscience really like? The kingdom is difficult to comprehend, and even more difficult to describe. Partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Sounds incredible. Alan Z. Let's go there right now. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? Oh, right. Then let's get there, uh... Eventually? That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Rebishal. When that demo real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we're all going to be so much happier. Well, this, it doesn't take a long time to reach this. It's just an hour, 25 minutes. We'll, I'll think about it. It can't hurt to have it here. Even if we don't have it in one of my cabinet slots. We have a little more time, everyone. So let's continue investigating the apartment while we're here. Where's my flashlight? Dishes soaked up in a pot. None of these is weird. An empty ashtray. Getting all these plus one experience points. 
Flyers for underground parties. Dates for open lectures at a local university. Party Dragon's Silk Robe. The sleazy, silky bathing robe in vibrant blue features. A roaring dragon on the front, ready to take off in the night. A red belt has been provided for fastening. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from Seal. The real Seal lights probably don't care. <laughs> It took me a second to get it. <laughs> Hasn't there been... Uh, I shouldn't talk about it, but I'll talk about it briefly. Hasn't there been a lot of hubbub recently about people wearing clothes that they shouldn't wear because they're not from that country? That happened recently with... Uh, it was like a year ago or so. Someone wore like a... Uh... Oh, it... I can't remember what it was now. It was a China's, a China, it was a dress. And I think she was an actress or a singer or something. And uh, Twitter or, or something blew up in anger that she was American or something. And she shouldn't be wearing it. That's what this is mocking here. It's culturally insensitive, but only for people who are not from the place this was made for. The people from here don't care whatsoever. That's amazing. But this is probably a jacket. It is, so this is not for us. Because I like my RCM patrol cloak at the moment. Okay, let's talk to him again. We might have one or two more things to talk about, but then we're done. Was there anything else? Can you tell me about your friend? Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kendra, and life has not been easy for him, but he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. What's Kedra? Kedra is a candidate member of Eptis, but between you and me, their potential membership is more, uh, contentious of an issue. What do you mean? That it's never going to happen. They entered negotiations in 21, and it's been pending ever since. What's this Epis thing you keep talking about? Epis is a very special program developed by the Moral Intern to support certain Occidental nations. It began as a unified system of weights and measures, which proved to be a wild success. Nothing but kilograms and centimeters as far as the eye can see. Logic. God, yes. Sweet standardization. That backbone of rationality and commerce. It was such a wild success that we expanded it into an economic union for the processing of steel. Another success. And between you and me, the moral intern feels emboldened by this success. Emboldened to take Epis to the next level. Okay, but like, what's it stand for? Why, it stands for progress and stability. Like the moral intern as a whole. No! What do the letters stand for? Uh, it's been such a wild, extraordinary success so far. We're very excited to take it to the next level. You don't even hear the words I'm saying, do you? A s s supranational political alliance. The United States of Occident. It's going to be like... Is it going to be like this place here? You mean Revishal? No, it's going to have a transparent democracy? Is Revachal going to be part of Epis? It's one day going to be a candidate member of Epis, sure. Did you say that candidate members never become real members? No, no, candidate members do become members. Why do, why do we even have the whole system in the place if they don't? It just takes time. Time and evaluation. But we were talking about my friend here, not politics. <laughs> you still haven't told me who he is. Sorry, who? The man throws a quick glance at his watch. Your friend, the smoker from the balcony. We were just talking about him. But I told you, officer, he's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It's a cornerstone of our civilization. Fine, but what's his real name? 
Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. So all you can tell me about him is that he's here to study the arts. Yes. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. Which ones? He is a truly free spirit. He likes all the arts. Perhaps uh, graphics design? Printmaking? Uh, who knows? The world is open wide for a talented youth like him. What are you doing in his apartment by yourself? I'm just enjoying the view. He's the man smiles, nodding to the window. Isn't it rude for your friend to leave you alone like this? We're old friends. Nothing taboo between us. He comes and goes. I'm sure you'll see him around. He's very active. How did you two even become friends? How did any of us become friends? Bad things happening on the Insulindian Is Isola. Oil platforms ablaze in the night. Civil war is lasting for the years. Finally, the international community is forced to step in. You're describing how the coalition occupied Ravishal. One of the wonders of democracy is that everyone is allowed to have his own opinion. The man pats his pockets, looking for something. And not just allowed, encouraged even. Have you ever tried debate? What do you mean? Debating. You should consider joining a debating society for adults. I hear the oodles of fun. I used to have a flyer for one, but... Uh... But now I start to think of it, it was for an improv class anyway. It's this funny theater thing, you know. He moves his fingers. Very creative. Helps relieve stress. Conceptualization. A chill runs down your spine as you envision a half dozen people in professional attire standing around a chair awkwardly pretending to be waiting for a motor bus. It's neither funny nor creative. Alright, that's all I need. Of course, I'm glad I could help. I see nothing else to click on. We're done. Okay, everyone. Well, I think we'll stop here. When we come back, we'll talk to Kim. We'll get the evening, I guess, summary done. And then... We'll go to our room and wash our hands to get that death smell out. I will see you, I'd, before I forget, we might as well, just in case it matters, we'll put this on. This plus one interfacing. And that will do it for us, everyone. I will see you all in the next one. Thank you for watching.